Greetings and welcome to another excellent World of Tanks video. Of course, this is the 38H, and of course, this is my pilot, the Nazi Zombie. Now, I have a really wild game for you, and the thing that makes it so cool is that I got on, checked out what was going on, you know, whatever, messages or whatever, and I got to the game and go, well, let me go to the store. So I go to the store pick up my free daily chest and I got a commander XP bonus like 2.75 I think it's what I got for that then I was like well what do we need to do so I go and check uh, different my different like mainline tanks sexton artillery see what the situation was I building a commander I mean you know it's like I don't remember exactly Came and checked in my 38H. I was like, okay, I was, you know, I got to play this. And what I've been doing recently, I've been busy doing other stuff because of the Stephen Roswell tank operation. Let me show it to you. We've all been working on our contract for the Roswell tank with the free Luau Steven commander. So this has been like top of the heap for us. And so I was like, well, let me just go over here, play 38H, get a win, get the double bonus, etc. I'm not really under any pressure to build him quickly. I have plenty of uh, eight and nine skill commanders with which to roll. Or in the case of my Sexton Artillery, I build those commanders from 5 on up to, you know, 6, 7, 8, whatever. It just depends. So, I was checking that. And since this is a big contract, people need to, you know, get on this. If you're not on this for some reason, you should get on there. Because at the very least, if you already have the Roswell tank... You can go through what stage six, I believe, to pick up the Steven Commander for free. Highly recommended. Three-star guy. Has some great animations. They added a new voice. I have no idea what it's like because I have not played. I don't have the Commander technically in my account. So I'm going to get it here. It's a win-win for me. I win with the Steven Commander on stage six when I complete it. And on stage eight when I complete that, I'll get the Roswell tank in advance of. Halloween 2024. Outstanding. So now, and now, back to your local 38H commercial. Or program, whatever. So, played the first game of the day, literally. Check this out. Welcome to Province. Now, this is one of my favorite maps because way back in the day, I would run my Tier 2 Ponce Viega Eins. German sniper tank, which means armor hunter number one on this map, and it was phenomenal. So I'm very familiar with playing this as a sniper, which is exactly what I'm going to do with this 38H. Look, there we go. So I want to break through here and see what kind of sniper position I could get here. I haven't actually done this yet in the 38H on this map, so this is a brand new experience. I had an idea. Now, I wanted to crush both vases. That would not make it easy for someone to say, gee, why is there one vase on this side and there's not one? They go, oh, the guy's over there. He crushed it. Blah, blah, blah. So here we go. I can't get a shot on this guy and on this guy either. But I am. I did get correct because this was the place to be and you're going to see that. Art Artillery is doing that. I realized, okay, let me look over here and see what's going on. There we go. And look, here it comes. Type 91 Japanese Tier 3 Heavy Tank. That's a, that's a Type 91 Japanese Tier 3 Heavy Tank. So I'm sniping this guy, and he is like, what the heck is drilling me? Now remember, I use only premium rounds. So I'm going to get penetration because this is semi-far away. I don't even know if a regular round would penetrate at this distance. But none of these bounced. 
And that guy was panicking how they're drilling him so hardcore. I'm drilling that guy too. One of the things about 38H match is if you get a chance to, to be in a sniper position, you know, at medium range or closer, jack auto, baby. And that's what you're going to see in this match. I mean, this match isn't anything super fancy about positioning or whatever. We have some guys over here trying to make their way up at Charlie uh, 3, etc. Whatever, dude. I'm busy. They just killed that freaking guy. No, uh, 30, uh, the, sorry, the, the 91 heavy tank is still there. Hey, buddy. I'm going to kill you. Now, I've lost the spot on him miraculously, but there he's firing. I didn't see him fire when I was in the game. And the other guy's lit up, so I'm just going to shoot him. The Type 91 isn't fast at all. There we go. Tag a Ruski. Now, I lost track of his Type 91. He moved. We'll get back to him a little bit later. But as you can see, we're winning this game. I've helped my team. There we go. I've helped my team build a lead. And these other guys are trying to throw it away. Because that's what these idiots do. It happens all the time. You build a lead for your team, and then idiots start throwing it away. Trying to be a superstar. As The Rock would say, know your role, Jabroni. There we go. Tag. He's, he's going to be a goner. Toast. Now, for me, it's pretty simple. When you're playing a 38H commander building match, you want damage. We'll take the kills if we can get them. We want damage. Damage is what gets you experience points. That artillery did a good job of shooting at that guy as well. I mean, he's desperate for points for obvious reasons. But I have just been crushing it over here. There we go. Hello. That is our friend the Type 91 again. Now he's behind the house. And you got the wall that's darker from the shadows. Now he's directly behind the wall, but there's another guy moving up in front of him as you can see. Whoops. Right here. Whoa. There's a light tank at Charlie 3 moving in in front of him. So what happens here, he's going to spot that guy, and he backs up. Hey, you backing up? I'm going to drill you. Got him. You got him again. And so, you know, when that happens to you, you start, you know, you can panic. And he moves forward and figure that's his best choice. Oh, stud. Got that guy. So now it's like, all right, what's going on here? Six to four. We so got these two guys you can see there. You know, Echo 7, Fox 7, that guy, plus another guy at Hotel 7. So I'm going to go there and see if I can get an angle on these guys. And just, you know, snipe kill them. There's no need to get close and personal if you can snipe the guy and kill him that way. And this turns out to be a huge advantage. I had a shot on him, but it just wouldn't do any damage. I don't know why, but some crazy angle or something. Your hotel is on fire. Now, when my friends and I talked about this map, we didn't remember the name correctly. We kept thinking, well, you know, there are hotels on each corner. Maybe it's what's called hotel. We weren't paying attention back in the day. You know, but when they brought back province, they're like, oh, yeah, dude, that's the map we were thinking about, except they, there it is, that, re, that uh, bounced off. Very bogus. Check out the shot that comes up, though. Bam! Hammer time, baby. I could have gone down, but there's no reason to go down. I don't want to make myself a counter-sniper target. Really. 
So I was like, okay, let me go over there, see if we can spot this guy, what's going on. So gonna get over here, counter spot him. Well, get in a position to drill him. If I can without being counter sniped. I mean, I just spent all that time crushing those guys on the other side. I don't want them to do the same thing to me that I did to them. Now that guy's on my base, I'm like, well, I'm just so, I'm right down here. I'm going to go kill him and I'll make it back. It's no big deal. If I can get a shot, I can get a shot. If not, I can't. Well, you know, I'm like, okay, I can't get a shot. He was way further down than I thought. So I just take a recon and make it back because I know I can make it back to get a shot on him. And that's my alert symbol telling the guy I'm coming back. Of course, nobody on this team was using a headset but me. Whatever, dude. It's like an embarrassing, you know, infection. They're infected with the stupidity of, I don't use the headset. That guy spotted him, which is fine. You spot him, I'll might kill him. Fine with me. Barely, barely tagging him. Fantastic. All right, once again, establishing a lead for my team. Now I'm gonna go back and get this guy. So here I gotta go to this spot, go down the hill. I could go down at Julie at nine, but that's ridiculous. I might get an angle on him here as I come down the ramp. That I would not get if I was coming from Julie at nine. There we go. And not quite. But unfortunately he spotted me, so artillery sees me move. And yeah, nobody's coming. Yeah, I don't have a spot there. So here you go. Now I got you, baby. Artillery took a good shot at me and missed. I'm close to the wall of rock to protect me, theoretically. Got him. Gonna do the same thing here. Save myself blocking by the rocks. It's a pretty difficult shot to make with artillery. Here he's got no chance. Now, I'm at a 38-8. I'm too slow to really go up the hill and challenge the artillery and live. So I figured, hey, oh, I can get by the rocks, hang in the circle. <laughs> Works for me. Now, what I did is I move a little bit so I can get a gun angle in case this guy shows his face trying to come to the base. And now we have to wait for this artillery to show up, you know, for about, I don't know, maybe 60 seconds. So I've got my artillery. You know, he's moving and setting up position to get counter shots, what have you, while I who has received zero communications the entire game, has been taking care of this myself. Now, enemy artillery, as you can see, he's killed six guys. He's had a really good game. Our artillery has also had a decent game, real solid. Now, that he didn't have to have a great game because I was having a great game. And I was crushing guys that the artillery would have had a hard chance to shoot. All right, so here we go. Trying to get that positioning. There he is. Artillery shows I'm just peeking out, drilling him. Objectively, I should have let the artillery have more shots at this guy. But I was drilling him. I thought I was going to kill him. I couldn't believe he actually hit me as barely exposed as I was. So that was a great shot by him. Luckily for me, 
my artillery is here at the base. And it's a one-shot kill for him. So we score with the two-on-one, and I had not even known the artillery had moved up there. I was just concerned with waiting to get shots on the artillery, which I did because I was interested in damage to score commander points. And you're going to see exactly why that's the case in this game momentarily. And uh, now to the end of game. On the pedestal, as you can see, well, I got MVP. Now the enemy artillery had a great game, like I said. He got second place overall, even though he was on the losing team. My artillery had an okay game. I don't know how this Stewart got ahead of him, but okay. Because if you're watching the game, which in this video you're actually watching the game, you know who the third place guy really was. It wasn't the Stewart who that no one ever saw the entire game. Sorry. Here we are at the end of game screen, and I'm going to let you see exactly what I've done in my 38H. Now, I had a times eight commander bonus on here, first game of the day, etc. You know, I'm optimistic. I want to get times eight bonus with the bonus for the first win of the day in the 38H, which I did get. So I lost money, but normally I lose about 40 grand. So I lost only 16,000. Woohoo! It feels like a win, I swear. Um, you know, make a lot of operation tank experience, but doesn't go anywhere because this tank is already a, an elite premium. But the key part, 88,000 plus commander experience. As you can see, a few more of those kind of results, and I'll have this guy at, at eight skills. Because I killed six guys, we t discussed that earlier, 2,100 damage, best in the game, an absolutely killer match, the kind you dream of getting, really. Now let's go check out the medals. Ace badge, fantastic, can't complain. Set a guy on fire and killed him by fire. Did more damage than my hit points, was a top damage dealer in the game. You kill six guys or more in a game, you get the top gun. And you get a bruiser if you knock out crews or modules. And now let's go look at the other guys of note in this game. So, obviously me number one. Number two was the enemy artillery. I mean, he had a great game, really, for a sexton artillery. Seven kills, almost 2,000 points. You'll take that basically any day of the week because Almost every game, that is an MVP score. Just not this one, because this freak was here in the 38H, which was me. Now, this guy, I guess, had a decent game. I never saw him. But the game was won and put into the situation we were in by three people. Myself, the enemy artillery, as the last guy in their team with a killer game. I mean, the rest of his team was just, you know, inferior. By, and that's being kind. And also my artillery with his three kills. And I mentioned this in a lot of videos. But it's not how much damage you do. Yes, I did a ton of damage and so did he. Now we did so much damage and so much killing that yes, those amounts become substantial. But here, this guy was number three. Not today, Sonny. But the computer is programmed to value the 700 damage more than this 400 damage because it is better and he did have some spotting as well from that guy he spotted in our base that I killed but being a base defense spotter is worth something the computer doesn't have a value for it but you and I our brains have a value we go that dude was awesome he spotted the guy I killed him fantastic we averted that loss so right then and there automatically you'd vault him with the numbers he had we'd vault him to the second position on my team just for that then you count the fact that I drilled the enemy artillery at the end of the game he killed me with a great shot obviously and I set him up to be a one shot kill for my artillery who executed after I died if he doesn't execute it coin flip anything can happen so once again 
when you look, it's, it, you know, it's a famous basketball player who said, in these kind of situations, it ain't about the points. It's about the moment under pressure. All right. And that was Michael Cooper from the Lakers. Terrific player. Just an unbelievable uh, talent and ba basketball defender. Great shooter as well. Just a great player. And his observation is the correct observation. It is about the moment of being under pressure. How do you respond? Well, throughout the game, I was raking it in. Same thing for this artillery. And at the end of the game, he killed me, which is, you know, the thing to do. I was the, you know, most damaged dealer on my team. But under the moment of pressure as well, not only did the enemy artillery kill myself, but my artillery followed that with his next shot, killing the other guy again. This Stewart, I don't know this guy, never seen him before. He really didn't show up. You know, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, well, the Stewart made another kill or whatever. Realistically, what he did helps the team, obviously. But, I mean, you watch this game. This guy, he's number three. All right? He played the best that wasn't me who did the most or the enemy artillery who did the most killing. So the two of us were clearly one and two. I set up the win. He's right there to the end. He wins if he finishes off my artillery. But my artillery finished him off, making me the winner. But realistically, he was the third best player in the, in the match. Because your eyes don't lie to you. You're like, dude, that guy played fantastic. Spotted the guy trying to take our base as number one. And number two, he killed the guy to finish the game. It, right then and there, it's like, dude, you're awesome. He did a great job under pressure. So this is how you separate the men from the boys, under pressure. And that's the thing that, you know, my dad taught me. you got to know how to win, but you got to know how to win under pressure. And that's what makes the people who are great at their game so great at their game, under pressure. Anybody can win, potentially, when there's no pressure. But when the pressure of win or lose comes up, it's, it's difficult. Even those people like myself who cash in, you don't cash in every time because it's difficult. The other guy's there too. He's not there because he's a chump, all right? That enemy artillery, that guy had a great game, all right? So, you know, we went up against him. He got me and the other guy got him. That's fantastic. It's only fantastic because he was good. If he was a chump player, it, that would have been a nothing game. Great for the, you know, would have been great for the points. For myself, it would have been great in that regard. But what made this game extra great is you get down to the end. You know, win or go home. One of those kind of mentalities. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. So you could see, you know, one of the ways you could score in a 38H on the province map, for example, as it's a terrific mid-range mid sniper. And you saw it right there in front of your face. Also... You have abilities to do more than that, which I was able to do. You know, I spotted the guy that was below me with the artillery. Put that he put a really you know nice um, through the keyhole type of a shot, killed that guy. And that's what I'm telling you, man. Our artillery played a really good game. His numbers look terrible, relatively speaking. Three kills is, is pretty good, but the damage was low. Hey, you know, you shoot a guy, he dies. That's your job. That's the job of, you know, artillery. And sometimes you're going to get 100 points for that. Sometimes you're going to get 300 points. You never know. So realistically, you know, we got to give my artillery the credit that he deserves. He was awesome under pressure. Speaks for itself. So hope you enjoyed this game. Hope you learned something from watching it about how to play 38H. The value of, you know, great artillery players, yours or the enemies. Because a lot of people played good in this game, key positions, and we covered that. So look forward to seeing you guys in another video, hopefully. I have many more to, to do. I'm going to make one about that Stephen uh, Roswell tank updated. So see, let you see how it's going over here. Um, that pretty much covers everything. So... 
Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys later. And as always, like and subscribe.